We just sang a responsorial hymn this morning. After the first reading, there is a psalm that is sung or recited. This morning, the choir led us to sing it. I want to ask all of us whether we remember what we just sang this morning. What was our responsorial psalm? The response. How did we respond to the psalm this morning? Let's see whether we are in God's presence or our minds are still wandering and must be welcome here into God's presence. Let's see. Beautiful. Beautiful. The Lord is the upholder of my life. Or simple, the Lord upholds my life. Where do we pick this psalm from? Psalm 54 verse 4. The Lord is the one who upholds my life. It's a declaration. It's a statement. This is from David. People have gone behind him to speak to Saul. To lie against David. He prays for vindication. The Lord is the one who upholds my life. The Lord is the upholder of my life. The Hebrew word translated in English as upholds is shamak. So we can take as synonyms for uphold, support, or sustain. So we are not wrong when you say, the Lord is the one who supports my life. The Lord is the one who sustains my life. The Lord is the one who upholds my life. This morning we shall look at how he sustains, upholds our life and why he does that. The howness and the whyness. How does God sustain your life, my life, our lives? And why does he does that? Dearly beloved, I take you to Psalm 103. The first reason why God sustains our lives. How? No, it's not the first reason. How does he do it? How he goes about it, the modality, is true forgiveness. This morning, that was what I said in inviting you to ask for pardon. Psalm 103, dearly beloved, verse 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He who forgives all your iniquity and heals your disease. Amen. So how does God sustain our life? Through forgiveness. If God was to deal with us according to our sins, Who would have been here? I wouldn't be. Let me put my hands down quickly. So the Lord upholds us through his mercy first. The Lord upholds us, dearly beloved, through protection. The protection he gave us last night. Yesterday was 21st September. We went to sleep. We woke up. For the Lord sustains us. Psalm 3 verse 5. Pardon me to share this with you. This is what the psalmist says. I lay down and I sleep. I wake up for the Lord sustains me. It's because of his sustenance. That is why we are here. If the Lord does not sustain you, you will not get up. Somebody said, Father, it's not true for me. I woke up this morning by by my my alarm clock. It's not true. Your alarm cannot wake your soul. There are times when even when the alarm rings and when your hands are quite long enough, you you, you want to hit it and you you want to even pick the phone and and, and lock it. So your alarm cannot sustain your life. At times the soul is willing to come to church Sunday morning, 6, 6 30. Then the flesh is weak, saying, No, I can't make it out. The weather is is nice, suitable for rest. So, body rest. Then the soul says, Hey, guy, this is Sunday. You have to go to church. I sleep. I wake up 
For the Lord sustains, upholds, supports our life. Three, the Lord is the one who gives us sustenance, food, material benefits. Genesis 27, 37. When Isaac had blessed his first son, Jacob, and he fled, and his brother Esau got wind of it, he came to his father asking him to bless him. But this is what Isaac told Esau, his son, his eldest. Jacob had already taken the blessing. He said, I have sustained your brother with grain and wine. I have sustained him. So sustenance through material benefit. The third reason, modality, how God sustains us through food and drink. It is not my, your strength, ours, that nourishes us. No, it is God that gives us food to eat. Yes, and Psalm 103 affirms this very beautifully. Let's go back to Psalm 103, dearly beloved. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 103. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He who satisfies you with good, good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The third modality. I said the first is true forgiveness. The second is true protection, bringing us to life each morning. The third is true physical sustenance, food and drink. The fourth modality. How does God sustain us? Dearly beloved, God sustains us through knowledge. The acquisition of knowledge. The first reading of today. Wisdom 2.21. Let's go there. We started the first reading from chapter 2 verse 12. But if you permit me to, to, to retrogress to verse 1, you understand beautifully what verse 12 means this morning. Wisdom chapter 2 is captioned as this. Life as the ungodly see it. When you have time today, later on in the day, after lunch, after dinner, just pick your Bible, the Catholic Bible. Open Wisdom chapter 2. Look at the title. It's written, How the Ungodly See Lives. Who is the ungodly? Give me another synonym for the ungodly. The atheist. The one who doesn't believe in God. The one who thinks that the money he has comes from his own strength, which is a falsehood. The ungodly. Ungodly. This is what the ungodly thinks about life. Pay attention. The ungodly says in Wisdom 2.1, not thinking rightly in three was it one uni ye. Because they are not wise. The ungodly are not wise. They say, brief and troubled is human life. But it is not true. Only the ungodly will say, brief and troubled is human life. But the maker says, human life is beautiful. In fact, when God had finished creating everything, what did God say? Tof meyod in Hebrew. Everything was good. So if man says what God has created good is evil, that man is has something wrong here. It's ungodly. Life is good. Life is not LG. What do you see under LG, the, the product LG? Life is good. I mean the life God has created, dearly beloved. I continue with them too. In wisdom too, the ungodly says, there is no remedy for death. Beloved, do you believe this is falsehood? There is remedy for death. Christ has given us a remedy for death. So anybody who continues to think that there is no remedy for death is ungodly. It's not thinking rightly. The ungodly says, no one has come back from Hades. The underworld, the nether world. It's not true. Somebody has come from the nether world. He's called Christ, your savior, my savior. Wisdom 2.2, two, the ungodly says, by chance we were born. But you and I know that God placed something in the wombs of our mother and we became human beings. We were planned. God thought about us. He formed us. Psalm 139, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 12 to 15. You are fearfully and 
were wonderfully made because the divine architect planned about your life. See the development and the formation of the human embryo. When the hairs begin to grow, the nails, the teeth, and, and the, the important organs. And you call this by chance? No, it's not chance. It is the ungodly that think that way. So it is true knowledge that will make you aware that life is not by chance, but it is by the divine architect. So the fourth modality, how God upholds us, is giving us true knowledge. That is why we have to be fed here in God's presence. Dearly beloved, the fifth way in which God upholds our life is through inspiration, instruction, and formation. What Christ Jesus does in the gospel of today. They got to Capernaum on the way when he has spoken second time concerning his, his passion. Scripture says the, 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 the disciples were saddened. They didn't understand why their Messiah, their Lord, had to go and suffer and die. They didn't understand the concept. Beyond that, they were even taken about greatness. Christ is going to die. Then they asked, okay, so when he goes to die, who who will succeed him? Who will be the greatest? Is it the, they, they lost. They lost. At home, he sat down and asked them, I, don't, I saw you conversing on the way. What were you discussing? Mute, they all became dumb because they were thinking about greatness when he was talking about suffering. So Christ had to take his time to form, to educate them. That you who follow me, if you are seeking after greatness, this is what you have to do. So God upholds our lives through instruction, formation, like what Mother Church does for us every Sunday when we come here. We are formed by the word before we are nourished by his body. Dearly beloved, the last means by which the Lord upholds our life is ensuring that we are given what is our due, what is truly yours. And I cite Genesis 31, 42. Jacob has spent 20 years with his uncle Laban, seven years working for their daughter, another seven years in the last six years. When the time was up for him to leave, his own uncle, a blood relative, Wanted to leave him empty handed. Wanted to chase him. To bring back everything. Then the Lord went to warn Laban in a dream. So when he met Jacob. That's what Jacob told him. Last night had the Lord. The God of Abraham. Not warned you in a dream. You would have let me go empty handed. So the Lord sustains us. By giving us what is truly your deal. Amen. Amen. So this is the howness. Through forgiving our sins, forgiveness, through protection, through sustenance, through knowledge, through formation, and last, the cease, through giving us what is our due. Keep these six things and you'll be blessed. Now, from the howness, let's move to the whyness. Why should God sustain and uphold your life? What have you done that God should sustain, should support you, should protect you? What have you done? Why? Should God sustain your life? Why? The first reason why God sustains our lives is for the glory of his name. Psalm 79, 9 to 10. And Psalm 23, 3. He does it for the glory of his name. So when you sleep and you wake up, one of the modalities of protection is not because you are packed enough for the next day. It is not because you did some good the last, the previous day. But you were brought back to life. I was brought back to life. We were brought back to life. First and foremost for the glory of his name. Amen. Is that clear, dearly beloved? Everything, every good the Lord does for us, first and foremost, he does for the glory of his name. Then after he had done this for the glory of his name, the second reason is that, People seek our lives. Scripture calls these people strangers. Psalm 54 verse 5. Listen to what the psalmist says. Lord, you have to sustain my life because strangers are after me. Why are they after you? Because the Lord has blessed you. Because the Lord has increased you. Because that child of yours has a special grace and favor upon him or her. So they must trail you. 
So the Lord has to sustain and support you. Else they will come after you. As they do till this day. So the second reason why God upholds, supports and sustains us is because strangers seek our lives. The third reason why God sustains, supports and protects us is to support, is to stop the wicked from self-gratification. If God doesn't protect us, the wicked might think that they have hired the upper hand. So in the workplace, the work set in the environment, something happens, then there is a difficult, there is a problem, and then they say in their local languages, aha, ye nyano. So, so, he thinks he prays. He thinks he's the one that does that. We, we've gotten him. God will never allow the wicked to have your way, his way over you. So he will sustain you and he will sustain me. The fourth reason why God sustains us is to stop the wicked from causing further harm. Don't confuse this with the third. The third is to stop the wicked from gratification and rejoicing over us. Wisdom 2.17 The fourth is to stop the wicked from causing further harm. Because when there is a delay, you have prayed and there is no response and is, is God really alive? Does God really listen to our prayer? When you are in straits, you are in doubts. Yes, then they sit at the corner laughing. Three days ago, a young lady and a friend came to visit me. Says, Father, some time ago, where I live with my husband, some ladies and guys have gang up against me. And one night around 9 p.m., I was going to shower. And I felt within me before leaving the shower that they had placed certain things just been aided. In Cree, was what to me do? She stepped upon it, then he felt something in her, in, her, in her limbs, but he called upon the name of Jesus. As he was walking to her room, he saw two guys looking up at her to see whether he was going to collapse to the ground. They are around us in the home environment, in the work environment. But the Lord sustains us from these wicked men from causing further harm. Wisdom 2.19. The reason why the Lord sustains and upholds our life is at times when our, 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 our plight, our situation is prolonged, is delayed, it may cause desperation and extension. Desperation means we wouldn't want to pray again, follow God again, worship God again. Some can even take their lives so, in order to prevent us from causing suicide, God steps in to uphold our lives. Because your life is precious. Dearly beloved, the sixth reason why God sustains uphold our life is because of the prevalence of envy, jealousy, and selfish ambitions. Human wickedness is at an all-time high in this nation called Ghana. In this nation called Ghana, human wickedness. That is why people can kill for positions. Yes, they don't care. They don't care. They can go to so-called places, self-styled prophets, and they'll tell them, take this, go and put it on the seat he sits on at the workplace. If he survives after one month, then this is no power. Then a young, enterprising young man who's taken after his family. A beautiful young lady who has been just employed just six months. His position is taken and given to another person. It is happening. You know these things more than us. I'm not working in those environments. You are those working there. So men in this nation have become wicked. The prevalence of envy, jealousy and wicked. Am I saying it? I'm not the one saying it. It is in scripture, the second reading of today. Read James chapter 4 verse 2. Wickedness of man. The seventh reason why the Lord sustains us. When men fail us. Who are the men? Our parents can fail us. Our fathers can fail us. Our mothers can fail us. Even our siblings can fail us. They are people. Wonderful couple. They did all their best. Educated all their awards. God blessed this family when they were young. 15 years in marriage. 20 years in marriage. They did everything right. Then they send all these kids abroad. Then they go 
Two, three years, they're not calling home. Five years, they're not calling home. Fifteen years, they're not calling home. Somebody goes with them. Why are you not communicating with your parents? Oh, leave them alone. This delay in my life, my pastor told me that it was because of my dad and my mom. Yes, your siblings, your children can disappoint you in life. You thought you were forming them, educating them for them to come and take care of you. Yes. Because human beings can disappoint us, the Lord upholds us. Psalm 27, 10. Say, Father and mother will fail me, but God never fails us. Amen. The last eight point, and I rest. The reason why God steps in to uphold, sustain our life, is to enable us to accomplish and realize our dreams and goals. If God is not in that dream, you can't fulfill it. Because time is past, present, future. No man has control over his or her past. It's gone. The only moment we have control over is the present. The present even slips through our hand and becomes past. But the future is there. And God draws in a type of future. It is not future. It's called eternity. Because even if you go to dwell in in future, you will age. But God doesn't dwell in time. It is man who dwells in time. So God dwells in an elongated future. Or an elongated present, which is called eternity. So God sustains us so that you, I, all of us together can reach our goals. Dearly beloved, because God does this, you and I, this Sunday onwards, should gallantly, without fear, fix all our gaze, our lives, our resources, our strengths, even our times, our weaknesses upon him. For he upholds our lives. I conclude with Psalm 124. A very beautiful song. Senye rade naya Senye yesu naya Moma is Ryan Kao. Psalm 124, listen. It says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let his right say now, put your name there. If had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then all over us would have gone the raging waters. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us a prey to their feet. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Why? Because our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Let your help, your sustenance, find its foundation on the Lord. Amen.